YouTube, my name is Chad. Welcome back to my shop. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video here to talk about my new uh, fogless coolant spray system that I built um, over the last week or two. Uh, I've, I've posted a few pictures over on uh, on Facebook on the uh, YouTube Machinist forum, um, and uh, I'm going to do a thread on Hobby Machinist about it as well. <clears throat> but I just wanted to to give you guys an overview of the system. It's uh, it's really simple. It's something that, especially if you've already got a mill and you know a lathe, which you don't even need a lathe, but just a mill, you can easily build this. Uh, I built everything for, which I already had the um, indicator base here, but I built everything <clears throat> with all the fittings and everything you see for about 45 or let's just say $50. So the bulk of the cost of the unit just to give you the, the overview of it, was in the brass fittings, which there's one, two, three, four. There's actually one on the inside, five, six. So there's six of those, uh, as well as the tank, which is just a home uh, water filter canister tank. Uh, and then uh, all you need is a small piece of aluminum for this, for the spray head, another small block of aluminum for this, for the, uh, the air to split it on the way in. And then this was just a piece of brass stock that I had that I, uh, so as far as materials, it's very minimal. Um, and then I think I bought 20 feet of the tubing. So just to give you the overview, <clears throat> it's real simple. Like I said, it's just a, a single uh, block there to split the air coming in. Then the air pressure goes off. One goes into the coolant tank. The other goes straight to the head. And so that's why there's two lines. So what's happening is the tank is being pressurized at the same time as the head. The pressure builds up in the tank, which then forces the coolant up and out this hose over to this needle valve. And these are two needle valves here um, that you need. And then by using the needle valves, you're able to control the airflow and the coolant flow separately. So that's real important to be able to adjust how much coolant you need. Uh, there's some, going to be some things you're going to do where all you're going to want is more air and just a little bit of coolant. Um, but then you can literally make it basically do a full-on flood. But since I'm not running a flood coolant system where the coolant is returned back into the system, um, I try to. I haven't really seen the need to do that, but I also am going to try not to do that since I'm going to have to clean it up with a shop vac or something eventually. Now the way I've been running it um, has been just a little bit of coolant. Um, and there's been very little mess. I've been really surprised that even after I've, I'm done with everything, uh, that the shop vac cleans up everything. Um, I'm not getting a, I'm getting a little bit of sling off here at the chuck, but that's to be expected with any kind of coolant. So uh, I'm very happy with how the system performs. So I'm gonna give you a brief uh, overview of that right now. So like I said, we have our spray head here, which it's real simple. It's drilled all the way through for the airline. And I want to say I did a 530 seconds hole all the way through. If I did it again, I'd probably do it a little bit smaller just because. And then it's drilled perpendicular and tapped as well uh, for the coolant line to come in. So the coolant, so the air already is moving as it comes through and the coolant is then you know, allowed to drop down into that air path. Um, then the, uh, the brass tip here is drilled all the way through with about a hundred thousandths diameter drill bit. I can't remember what the number is. And then the last there at the tip, I really can't see it, but the actual orifice on this one is 45 thousandths. Um, I actually did that because I was just scared to use the, the 40 thousandths, which is the smallest drill bit in my set. Um, I would probably tighten it up to 40 if I did it again as well. And then that is just threaded in from this end. So that's all that goes through the, here is two lines. Uh, these two holes here that you can see are simply for mounting uh, a threaded rod on this side that the indicator holder base can then clamp to. So that's all those two holes right there are for. All the rounding and everything on, on it is just decorative. It serves no function. Just makes it look a little bit better. Um, inside here, which I'll show you in a minute, there is the one hose that comes from the bottom, comes all the way up, and then feeds out. 
this is the, the only thing you'll really have to modify with this is the way I did it was I uh, this fitting here that screws in which is a one half pipe thread fitting screws in I then made an aluminum fitting from uh, that I uh, glued in with epoxy on the inside and then there's a compression fitting on the inside of it just like this that holds that tube on as well so you do have to do some drilling to make that hole a little bit bigger and the same thing here from the bottom you drill it uh, real simple takes 10-15 minutes to do all of it um, the coolant that I'm using it's the first thing that I bought is just this uh, stay lube soluble oil so it was cheap it was like 11 bucks on Amazon but I don't know if you guys rush out and buy it the price is gonna jump up so you know at least let me buy a few more first but you can mix it based off of uh, you know from 5 to 1 uh, to 20 to 1 are the recommended dilutions um, and so I just put a couple ounces in this filled that up um, it's amazing it, it comes out brown like a regular oil and as soon as it hits the water it turns milky just like that so so far it seems to be doing everything that I want it to do so let's give a, a quick uh, shot here of, of it in action so first thing we're gonna do is we've got our air on yep so we've got everything hooked up to the compressor it's a little bit left over so we turn on the air I'll just go ahead and open it up and then you can bleed in the the coolant as you see fit and as you can see right there I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera but it's putting off a good bit now you can actually go so far as to create a full-on flood or you can just let it sputter which seems to be a really good thing for the majority of my turning and then also on the milling machine the sputter uh, you know it, it puts off just enough coolant to moisten everything um, and then the air is going to really be the thing to do the cooling and then of course you can adjust that as well so that's the basics of the system um, so let's go ahead I'm gonna open up the, the lid here on the coolant tank and I'll show you that as well so depressurize that okay so what you can't see is where I drilled to make the hole in here bigger other than the threads for the fitting to fit from in from this side of the one half it's a one half pipe thread to one quarter MIP compression fitting so that's what you got here and it's hollow on the inside it's about six hundred thousandths on the inside um, so like I said I just made a, an aluminum fitting that that I uh, glued or epoxied on the inside of it and then I drilled and tapped it to accept another uh, one quarter uh, fitting that has a one eighth pipe thread on it. And so then you just, that's real simple. That's the only modifications you've got to make. So you will end up drilling this hole out a little bit bigger. And like I said, drilling that a little bit bigger. So as you guys can see, this is uh, the block coming in. Just your normal female or your male fitting there, uh, drilled and tapped with a quarter uh, pipe thread here, and uh, and then it just comes in from this end and it just tees straight across and that's it. I left this meat here because I haven't decided how I'm going to mount this yet. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to drill and tap it. Uh, or just drill all the way through and then I'm gonna find a place over here somewhere to uh, uh, between the lathe and the milling machine that'll allow me to just mount this and then I can just hook the air hose up to it and disconnect it when I'm done so that's the, the system in a nutshell um, I've been running it at about 20 psi I don't know it seems to be the from what I've read a lot of guys are in that 15 to 20 range seems to work fine you could back the pressure off um, 
and when you do that you're, it gives you a little bit more adjustment on the air to coolant ratio but that's uh, that's the gist of it and so uh, like I said I bought 20 feet of hose I probably have three or four feet left over I haven't done anything with uh, but you can make this as long as you want uh, I don't think there's going to be any issues with making the hoses any longer and uh, and then I like to just zip tie them together just to keep everything as neat as I can but uh, so that's my coolant system so that's one of the things I've been up to lately uh, I do have a I'm, I think I'm gonna put out a video on making a uh, ER32 collet chuck I'll show it to you real quick so this is which I didn't take the part out but this is the ER32 collet chuck that I made earlier that I just finished earlier today um, I think it's gonna be just uh, just fine when I dial it in in the four jaw chuck but in the three jaw the best I can get is about three thousandths or right at four thousandths run out out of it so we're gonna try it in the four jaw now that it's all complete and see if I can dial it in and it's functional that way um, but then I'm also considering making an ER32 hex block and an ER32 square block as opposed to buying them. I mean, I know they're only about 35 bucks a piece, um, but if I can make it, I'd like to, and uh, and you know, get that satisfaction out of that. So I'll hold that up there for you guys. Hopefully, you can see that up close. So that's an M40 by 1.5 millimeter thread here on the end. Um, like I said, I have this part tightened up in there. I can't get it out by hand. Uh, but that was just a part that I was using just to check it. Um, I did drill it all the way through. Uh, if it works like I think it's going to work, I plan to drill and uh, thread this to three-quarter tin and then uh, make a stop that I could put in there, a work stop that'll screw in from the back side for if I'm working on short pieces that it'll be able to uh, you know, set things at a consistent length or, so just just something I'm just playing around with. So, but anyways, that's that's what I've been up to lately is the ER32 collet. Uh, I guess you call it a collet chuck or a collet block, and uh, the coolant mist system. So I haven't made a video, in, a decent video in a while. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, I only really make the videos during the winter months. But um, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Uh, you know, shoot me a message. Look me up on Facebook. Uh, my name's the same on Facebook, uh, just Chad Hensley, and uh, look for you on the YouTube Machinist, uh, and then also, um, if you guys are ever on HobbyMachinist.com, I'm on there as well as 3D Shooter 80 just a username I carry over from an archery website, and uh, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. That's, that's a straightforward, simple coolant system, so I hope you guys like it, and I hope it gave you some good ideas. Thanks. Yeah.